need people to do is send some words to TEDx Pen and get them on the screen. Let's see what we can do. Yeah. Now I spit a couple lyrics and I'm known to freestyle So when I am always rapping, well it's known to be wild And when I start rapping, you can see what I mean So go ahead and send some words, we can tweet on the screen Plus they know they're looking at me like they never heard me rhyme before I'ma keep it rapping, old school, letting the dinosaurs Yes, I rap until I always spit a banger Spit a sick banger, edge of their seats, a cliffhanger Yes, I spit a head, plus they know I leave them dead While I'm rapping for my people who come to attend TED And I always gotta spit it, graduated from college But you really must acknowledge he's packing loose Lyrical knowledge, you know I gotta rap so they're looking like damn he's dope But I keep it sweet like I brought up a cantaloupe So I keep it rapid attacking, I keep backpacking while I keep these raps But they're never backtracking, they know he's gotta think on the mic he never shrink But I spit a quick rhyme the time it takes to blink They know I gotta spit it never dropping any groan But they told me that there's no place like home, well the stage is my home So I spit it right off the microphone, maybe this is just something from improved cytochromes I got the breath control plus they know it's so dope, and yes I gotta spit it, so there's always more hope, yeah. I have got a rhyme, but I never really rap slow. And you should know that there is no K in Glasgow. I spit a couple rhymes, pull them out of storage. Really? They thought that I couldn't rhyme orange? I'm never really stopping this. Out the trachea and the esophagus. I am that lyrical hippopotamus. So I gotta rhyme it and always bring it to ya. So I am on the mic and I be shouting like booyah. So I gotta rap it, plus they know it's never tragic. And I had to go through traffic just to spit this lyrical magic. I'm ripping and killing and flipping the lyrics off the top. So I'm spitting all of the lyrics and it never really stopped. They know it's so fanatical. But yes, I keep it all alphabetical and rapping really so radical and it's very theoretic but it's also applied so i'll spit all of the lyrics bring it out from inside yeah you really heard me rap it's like 11 blocks from zellerbach i gotta spit it so i'm always here to let it rock they know i'm doing this all right again for me and all my friends up at dead x10 there's really no burning me rep the whole university yeah i gotta spit it while doing it to eternity the microphone is my place it's my home and this is how you spit a rhyme off of the dome Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. OK, be honest. When I got on stage, you probably did not have that in mind. <laughs> so how did I get into this? Well, 2003, I turned the radio on, and I discovered this thing called hip hop, an attempt to make music out of language. I fell in love. Just for fun, I tried writing my own lyrics. And eventually, I discovered this subculture called freestyling, improvisational rapping. I spent 13 years practicing, embarrassing myself in front of my friends, working at it, improving. And what I learned is that improvisation isn't just something you do on stage. It's a lifestyle. It's a way that we get more out of what we do and get better at doing it. Here's a story. Ninth grade, my first day at a new school. Somehow, word gets out that the short, skinny new kid is actually a rapper. I've been writing lyrics, but I never actually freestyled before, so naturally, my bloodthirsty peers haul me into a ring with the reigning rapper and make us battle. <laughs> Trust me. Uh, when I was there, it felt like someone had thrown me into the Coliseum, except the gladiators had it easier, right? This is an American high school, ninth grade. <laughs> if I embarrassed myself in front of my peers, death would not be quick and painless. What I learned can be summed up in a simple phrase. Man plans, God laughs, or the universe laughs. But the fact is, when things don't go according to plan, which is usually the case, it falls on us to improvise. The almighty Wikipedia defines improvisation as making do despite absence of resources. You can look it up right now on your phones. I think it's about more than just making do. I think it's about tapping into the resources within us. I would define it differently. To me, improvisation is the application of the creative process to the present moment. We all know thinking in advance is important. That's how you prepare for what lies ahead, right? But we fail to appreciate sometimes the importance of the moment itself, which after all is the place where our plans come together. Now, it's in our nature to fear risk. To our ancestors, making poor decisions could be the difference between catching dinner and, well, being dinner. But the stakes are different today. If we overcome that hardwired risk aversion, we can embrace the opportunities modern life has to offer. One thing is certain, you can't plan forever. Eventually, the spear must be thrown. I used to struggle with this immensely. As a kid, I couldn't throw myself in and just dive in and learn through experience. After that battle, which I won, to everyone's amazement, especially my own, I realized my insistence on overplanning stemmed from anxiety, from a fear of not being in control. 
but risk and uncertainty are facts of life. The greatest plan carries a margin between strategy and reality. And what we do with that margin can mean the difference between success and failure, as you can see on the screen. The word improvisation comes from the Latin improvisus, unforeseen, unexpected. Learning to expect the unexpected is crucial. I'm not suggesting we should overthrow the traditional plan, but that we rethink our understanding of planning as a dynamic rather than a static process a dialogue with our environment that's always open to new opportunities and information. And it's not just because life comes at us quickly. That spontaneity, I think, is essential to creativity itself. We need that raw, chaotic inspiration just the same way that we need the structure, the intellect, to give our ideas form. It's kind of like what cognitive psychologist Daniel Kahneman calls fast thinking, the intuitive, impulsive patterns of thought versus slow thinking, rational, analytical, deliberate, and focused. There's a metaphor I really like. Jonathan Haidt describes us as elephants on a rider's back. The elephant is our instincts. We often feel like we're in a tug of war with our impulses, kicking the elephant into going the path we want it to. But the elephant is old fashioned. He's powerful, but he's not always so reliable, and he's gonna do what he wants, or she. The key is not to see them as opposing forces, but as members of the, team, of the same team, to get them to work together, to train the two of them and fine tune their actions. In a creative setting, as you can see, the elephant has his paintbrush and his hipster hat, and there's a Jobs-esque critic on his back. The elephant does the first drafts. The rider edits. In real time, in front of a crowd, that's improvisation. When it's in our rooms with privacy and time in advance, that's planning. But the key is to realize that there's not always a hard and fast distinction between the two. They exist on a spectrum, and everything we do taps into both elements of our creative energy. For some of us, that means learning to get out of our own way, give the elephant room to do his thing. So neuroscientists, for example, at Johns Hopkins, had jazz musicians and rappers come in and improvise while they were being scanned in an fMRI. As you can see, blue areas indicate decreased activity, red areas increased activity. What they found was a decrease in activity in areas associated with self-censorship and an increase in areas associated with self-expression. Patterns very similar to those of people who are dreaming. This stacks nicely with how people describe what it's like to be immersed in creative work. We often get into what people call flow. You become one with what you're doing. It flows through you. In my case, the world kind of disappears. It's almost like I forget that I'm there. I forget the crowd's there. No offense, you guys are great. <laughs> but all that exists for me in those moments are the words and the rhymes and the beat. And I'm trying to put them together. I, I've never actually tried to describe this really. It's like a mix of auditory and visual. But when I see rhymes on the screen or I hear them in my head, I sort of imagine a network popping up on its own with rhymes that are related to each other, that sound like each other, and that have things in common. And what I'm trying to do is make them fit. I am focused. I'm just not focused on myself. But it took time to get there. When I was a kid, I tried writing things out by hand, memorizing things, memorizing rhymes like I was cramming for an exam. I realized I couldn't do that. I would have to tap into the strengths I struggled with so much as a kid. I dove in. I just practiced. I put the raw hours in and let Mimesis do the rest. I watched other rappers. I watched myself rapping. And eventually, the rhymes hardwired their way in. I reinforced those patterns. And I don't think it's just a metaphor that their brains look like they're dreaming. Because these people are so adept at what they do, they could probably do it in their sleep. When we get on stage, it looks like we're doing something, pulling something out of nothing, like a magic trick. But it's not magic. This is practice. Most of improvisation is preparation, the background readiness and constant reinforcement leading up to the moment where we finally let loose. You need to train your instincts, the elephant, before you can trust them. Anyone know who this is? MacGyver, the 80s action hero and the American icon of improvisation? able to get out of the stickiest situations with a Swiss army knife and an even sharper mind, and, and apparently a warhead over his shoulder. <laughs> Classic, right? What you probably didn't know is that in the fictional universe, MacGyver had an education in the physical sciences. His MacGyverisms relied on physics and chemistry. MacGyver improvised all right, but he was never unprepared. Here's a better example. London cab drivers. Before they're certified to drive in the UK, they have to pass a grueling exam called the knowledge. They have to learn everything, sounds legit, right? With an accent, <laughs> yeah, the knowledge. They have to learn everything about London's roadways. They have to create a deep mental model and draw on it through experience. 
And as they progress in their studies, an area of the brain called the hippocampus, the part responsible for memory, spatial reasoning, increases in size, at least in certain parts. And it shows. They can get from A to B on the fly. If there's a traffic jam, they can reroute without thinking about it. They're already situated before they go. They can think it without having to think about it. Now, this is probably easier said than done, right? That's what you're thinking right now. Getting on stage is scary. It's not easy to do new things in front of a bunch of strangers. It terrifies us. We become hyper self-aware. Every second feels painful. We feel cut off from the world, awkward, alone. That's not flow. That's the opposite of flow, freeze. We call it stage fright. But don't we improvise all the time? When you go home, you're gonna make conversation without thinking. You're gonna go on dates. You're gonna navigate really complex social environments pretty much automatically. We do this every day, but we don't call it improv. We call it conversation, going with the flow, playing it by ear, socializing. It's only in environments where it's expected that every note, every word has been planned out in advance that we even notice the pressure of improvising in the first place. I don't think that makes it easy. But when we realize that improv is about drawing on the everyday creative energy that we already possess and harnessing it, not learning it, that can make us bolder in drawing on the strengths we need in the here and now. I believe novelty is essential. It invigorates us. It makes us innovative. It reminds us there's more to do, more to explore, more to experience. When we forget that, life loses its touch. We get bored, boring, stale. By the way, I realized I've been talking a lot about myself. I don't mean to make it sound like I think I'm great. All I'm saying is I've come a long way since my bar mitzvah mixtape. <laughs> We're gonna leave it at that. Just wanna get that out there. But here's the thing. We need to learn to tap into this. It's part of what makes us people. It's what makes us members of that sometimes tragic, sometimes comic improv troupe we call humanity. Rather than shy away from the spotlight, let's rise to the occasion. Let's learn to embrace uncertainty and shift from seeing it as an obstacle to a source of opportunity. How do we get there? Well, a bit of planning, lots of practice, and a touch of improvisation. Thank you.